this is the uh, 89th section of uh, the morning devotion and we are taking him 168 when I survey the wondrous cross when I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died my riches gain I can but lose and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the them things that shall me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, so raw and love flamingo down. Did as such love and so meet of thorns composed so rich a crown. We are the whole realm of nation mine that we are an all from far to small love so amazing so so divine demands my soul my life my own let's uh, take another hymn 170 Deeper, deeper in the love of Jesus, daily let me go higher, higher in the school of wisdom, more of grace to know. Oh, deeper yet I pray. And higher every day, and wise I blessed Lord, in thy precious holy word. Deeper, deeper, blessed Holy Spirit, take me deeper still, till my life is Woolly lost in Jesus and his perfect will. Oh, deeper yet I pray, and higher every day, and wise and blessed Lord, in thy precious holy word. Deeper, deeper, though it cause her trials, deeper let me go, rooted in the holy love of Jesus, let me fruitful grow. Oh, deeper yet I pray. And I every day, and why the blessed Lord in thy precious holy word deeper, higher every day in Jesus till all conflict past finds me conquer. And in his own image, perfected at last. Oh, deeper yet I pray, and higher every day. And why the blessed Lord in thy precious holy word? Let us pray. Blessed Redeemer, we want to thank you this morning. 
we come with a, a grateful heart, heart full of uh, gratitude, heart full of uh, appreciation because of uh, not only how you passed us through the night to bring us into a new day, but how you passed us through the week to bring us to this weekend uh, apart from that how you carried us from the beginning of the year to today blessed redeemer we want to appreciate you so much and uh, thank you for the word of this life you've been receiving great father for close to three months now and uh, thank every morning Excepting Sunday morning, want to thank you because of how you have helped us so far. Thank you because of uh, the spiritual exercise that I know and I'm sure that has so much impacted people. Blessed Redeemer, I am trusting again that this morning, as we go through the word of life and then I come to your throne again of grace for prayer, that the spirit of of a revelation will rest upon us and the spirit of intercession will also rest upon us so that as we bring the revelation of God's word then there shall be the spirit of uh, of intercession and supplication to drive the word of God we will hear and prayer points into our lives and into the ears of God Almighty so that our profiting will appear thank you spirit of the living God this morning as you take over and as you help us this today is supposed to be uh, another weekend of a retreat I ask the spirit of the living God to make everything concise so to the benefit of all glory be to God once again we thank you as we commence this morning in Jesus name we have prayed amen the theme of this morning discourse for the day is uh, going to be taken from Isaiah chapter uh, 6, 1 to 8, and the theme is the necessity of being refocused. What that is suggesting, what our team is suggesting is that there is a, a loss of focus. There is a, 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 a a clear indication that many people have lost focus now the prophet Isaiah at a point in his life appeared to have lost focus and then God needed to refocus him so this morning uh, we want to look at our text and obviously there are so many things that are happening around us happening here and there that are capable of uh, making an individual making a pastor making a worker making a christian making a minister to lose focus and uh, some of these things are legitimate some others are illegitimate uh, some of these things are necessities of life but then they have made focus to be lost. So let's go to Isaiah again, chapter 6, 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, uh, high and lifted up, and his train feed the temple. Now it looks as uh, if the death of uh, Uzziah now helped to refocus Isaiah however that is not it it was just a mark it was just a, a kind of a landmark something to remember so in the day that Uzziah died Isaiah saw God verse 2 above it stood the seraphims each one had six wings with when they covered his face and with when he covered his feet and with when he did fly one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, with what happened? With what he saw? 
with the revelation that God opened to Isaiah, look at his response. Then said, I woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The revelation led to realization of uh, his, uh, his bad state, bad spiritual state. Verse 6, then as he realized uh, his bad state, he cried out and there was a response. Verse 6, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a life coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my, thy lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also, I had a voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. So, we are going to look at uh, the refocusing of uh, a man. So, the necessity, they need to be refocused. I want us to know and take note clearly that it has been predicted by the Lord Jesus himself as well as his apostles that in the last days there is going to be a loss of focus. Yes, Jesus Christ stated it. He said, iniquity shall abound, love of many for God, for things of God, for heaven, well, uh, what's cold now? It will shift, it will move and uh, be, be shifted from where it's supposed to be focused, could be full shifting or little shifting. Now, in Matthew 24, verse uh, 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was cold, but he that endureth to the end, unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now in Luke chapter 17, Jesus Christ uh, talking to his disciples, he now also pointed out that there is going to be a, a, a shifting of focus like it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. Let us read. Luke chapter 17, 26, and as it was in the days of Noah, and so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. What how was it in the days of Noah? They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, the days of Noah, the attention of people, the activities of men and women uh, were only on the things of this life. And legitimate activities overthrew the right activity. The focus was only on vanity. The focus was only on the things of the earth. The focus was only on transient things. Now, and uh, all the talking, all the preaching of Noah didn't make any impact. Now he said, like also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sowed, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Now he then said in verse 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So he said, likewise, it is going to be. So you can see attention being paid to the things that uh, should be given a less attention to the detriment of the real thing. That was how it was in the days of Noah. And that shift, that loss of focus to the real thing brought calamity. The same thing Jesus Christ said will be in the day when the Son of Man will be revealed that people will lose focus, attention will be shifted from the real thing to the things that are unreal. Now we know that wife of Lot also 
got lost because she looked back and that was a loss of focus her mind went back to the place she left so and in the days of Paul he equally also predicted this thing we are talking about first Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is a prediction. Now, Second uh, Timothy chapter three and verse one. You see, predict, predicted the same. Second Timothy chapter three verse one. This know also that in the last days. Perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. You can see the same shift continuing. Now in verse uh, uh, 1 of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the weak and the dead, and is appearing and is a kingdom. Why the charge? Because there is going to be a shift of focus. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Why? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. A shift, a removal of focus from truth, from what is okay to what is not okay. But after their own loss, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch now in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. Part of what will lead to the loss of focus is uh, afflictions uh, to be endured. Now, we also want you to know that uh, people can equally also refuse to be shifted Caleb and Joshua in their own day refuse to be shifted they refuse anything to make them lose their focus on their destination their eyes were set on their destination in Numbers chapter 13 27 to 33 and chapter 14 1 to 9 they were focused on where they were going and the troubles and challenges and difficulties that arose could not affect them. Now in Numbers chapter 14, let us read 23 and 24 and see the testimony of God, God's testimony concerning these men. So that you will now look at yourself and ask yourself, what are the things trying to shift my attention? It could be affliction, it could be legitimate things, but when attention is shifted from the real thing, there is going to be a repercussion. Some repercussion can be instant, some others may come later. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 23, Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land where into he went, and his seed shall possess it. So we find Caleb and Joshua, they remained focused. They refused the troubles, they refused the challenges, they refused the difficulties that they encountered on the way from shifting them. Samson and Saul lost their focus and their focus was lost to the flesh. Samson was a raised a deliverer, born a deliverer, but his focus was a, a loss. He lost his focus to his flesh. His flesh began to control him until he ran out of control. Young man, young woman, every one of us, you want to ask yourself, what are the things that are now controlling me, are now trying to take me away 
from what I was originally meant for, what I was originally called for, what I was originally meant to live for, what are the what is the wind that is driving me away as my flesh taking over my life. Now we also saw another person, uh, Saul. Saul lost focus. He was uh, elected to rule God's people. He was elected to direct the people of God. But at a point, he was distracted. At a point, he wouldn't listen to authority anymore. And then he was carried away until he destroyed himself. Let's look at uh, Judges chapter 16, a brief case of, uh, of Samson who was hijacked. And I hope you have not been hijacked by your flesh. I hope that you have not allowed anything to hijack you. The things that can hijack you can be legitimate. The people of Noah's day were hijacked by eating and drinking, building and marrying and uh, legitimate activities. The same thing also with the people of Lot. Legitimate things and illegitimate things took over their lives. So you need to ask yourself, what is in control? Am I still in charge of my life? Am I still in tune with uh, what I am called to do? Am I still focused in the core purpose for which God has uh, raised me and brought me into the watchman? In Judges chapter 16, we read from verse 3. Then went Samson to Geza, and saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. And it was told the Gezites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in, and laid wait for him all night, in the gate of the city. And we are quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is there, we shall kill him. Now these were men sent to kill uh, Samson in the house of a harlot, and throughout the night they were quiet. Mosquito biting them, they remained quiet. Uh, Incense crawling over them, they remained quiet because of their target. Now listen to me, the devil is not foolish. He can crop into somebody's life. He can creep into somebody's life, into somebody's house, and uh, into somebody's way, and will not show until he gets the target, until he gets you down. So, and uh, Samson left in midnight, and arose at the midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city, and the two poles, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. That was what happened. So Satan can, can come into, can, can bring his uh, agent, can bring his uh, emissary, can bring his representative into a church, into your life, at the place of work, in the school where you are schooling, and the person will just be there. You do not know that you are the target until several, several years, until you are gotten. That was exactly what happened to Samson, and so, and that was exactly what happened to Abraham. Now, the, the girl that you brought from Egypt was kept in the house. <coughs> <coughs> kept in the house until uh, the time that uh, Satan sensed, uh, sensed that he can now get him, and he was introduced to her, to him rather. And the introduction was, uh, was uh, from a point, from a side that uh, Abraham could not resist. So then the apostles lost focus as well. And uh, that was because they gave undue attention to physical needs while neglecting the necessary things. Yes, we have seen that attention can be lost. And we saw Samson losing attention. He began to go after what he shouldn't go after. The forbidden. Saul lost attention. And his loss of attention was because, or because he began to live in disobedience and would not listen 
to uh, people that is meant to listen to. Now the apostles. Apostles lost focus. How? They began to give undue attention to physical needs while neglecting the spiritual need. They gave attention to physical act activities now to the detriment in many in, in, in the case of many people in the church today, you find that we have given undue attention to business and then and we are dying spiritually. We have given undue attention to physical things as ministers and then and you find that the word of God is uh, the truth of God, the, the, the truth of God that should be balanced is now losing balance because we have allowed our strength to be sat. We have allowed, we have used our strength and used our energy in pursuit of the things, in unnecessary things, things that cannot be compared with the divine assignment, the word of God, and spending time with God, as chapter 6. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the two have called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It's not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. We have four brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. They came to their senses. They came to realize that they were using their time for what it should not be. They were squandering themselves. They were squandering the spiritual, uh, their spiritual life and placing the empanity of the people in danger when ministers of the gospel give attention to earthly things. When ministers of the gospel, when ministers of the word of God rather than giving attention to the word of God, begin to give attention to the things happening around them. They are placing the destiny, they are placing the souls of people under their care in danger. And so when the apostles realized that this was what they had become a victim of, they now decided, they say we did not do well. We have not acted reasonably. We have acted unreasonably to leave the word of God and begin to serve table, to use the time we should use to study the word of God deeply and to be able to bring out truth to feed the people that God has given to us. And then and we use it for tables, we use it for things that uh, do not count in eternity. We are, we are putting the, the, the souls of men under our care in danger. We are jeopardizing the people that God has put into our hands. The man of God from Judah, he also had lost focus and lost direction. It cost him greatly. And uh, that focus was because he listened to the counsel of uh, an old backslider, an old prophet, though a prophet, but had backslidden. That is found in First Kings chapter 7, 13, 7 to 10, 11 to 26. So he found out that we can lose focus. And the instrument of losing the focus can be a trusted person, person that has been there in the faith for a very long time, but you may not know that the person has gone down spiritually. You may not know that the person is no more there. The person can still be occupying office of the house fellowship leader, office of a women coordinator, office of a this and office of that. But the counsel that is coming from him or coming from her are counsels that will take you out from the truth. Therefore, we must be very careful. So this man of God from Judah, his focus, his direction was shifted by the counsel he got from the so-called old 
the so-called prophet, the so-called man of God. Now, when an individual loses focus, he begins to pay attention, great attention, to things that should be given very little attention and time. Take note. How do you identify an individual that has lost a, a, a focus? He will pay great attention to things that should not be given attention. Take note of that. You, that is the identity. How do you discover whether you have uh, uh, lost focus? Look at what you are given attention. How much of attention are you giving to the Bible as, the, as a minister of the gospel? How much of your time that you are spending in reading the word of God, in preparing the, 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 the word of God? How much of your time are you spending in prayer? How much of your time are you spending in the presence of God? How much of your time are you spending with God? How much of your time are you spending in the in the things that grow spiritually? Now we have two things. In the, the activities in the house of God are divided into two broad way, into two broad paths. One, spiritual activities, two, physical activities. Now, physical activities have to do with, uh, with administration, with uh, these, with that, that pertain to the physical life of the church, which is okay, which, uh, all necessary, which is necessary. But then, they cannot substitute the spiritual life of the church. The spiritual life of the church is based on the time you give to the word of God, the time you give to prayer, the time you give to study, the time you give to prepare the message, the time you, you, you spend with God. Please, every one of us should take note of this. Especially those of us that are working for church. If you give your time only to do the physical work, that's wonderful. But you discover that we will continue to cause offenses to the places where we are working if we do not have time if we do not take out time to develop ourselves time to spend with god now we can see it in matthew chapter 6 25 to 33 when jesus christ said unto the people seek it first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you now we have also another person that lost focus and that lasted for about 13 years 13 years he was walking in darkness and that was a man that had the call of god upon him the man abraham had a call of god in genesis chapter 12 god called him and he began a good work with god and for about 24 years he had worked with god but after 24 years of working with God, God came and then look at uh, what uh, look at what he said unto him in Genesis chapter 5. So that you don't think because I have followed God so, so, so many years, or I am this or I am that, that a time will not come. If you don't take time, you will lose focus. This is true. The devil is not does not respect title. It does not respect office. It does not respect age. It does not respect uh, the work you have done. It does not respect sacrifices you have made. It does not respect what you have done in the kingdom of before. Genesis chapter chapter uh, 17 and verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect 99 years abraham had a call when he was 75 years minus 75 years from 99 years that is 24 years now he has worked with god for 24 years out of these 24 years 13 years was 13 years of losing focus lucas genesis chapter 16 and verse 16 and abraham was four score and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abraham. 
that was the last heart of Abraham. That was the last fellowship God had with Abraham when he when he was 86 years after the birth of uh, of uh, of uh, Ishmael. 86 years. The next time that God spoke to Abraham was when he was uh, 99 years. 99 years. You minus uh, 86. You have 13 years. 13 years of darkness. 13 years of losing focus. 13 years of uh, of uh, following. 13 years of being off road. And so you need to ask yourself: Am I still in tune with the reality? Am I still in tune with God? Am I still in tune with the program of God? Or am I now pursuing the shadows? Have I left the call? Have I left the walk? You can be there, but you have left the walk for which God called you. You can be there in the parish. You can be there in the diocese. You can be there in the district. You can be there in the house fellowship. You can be there as a in the home, you can be there as a priorial leader, you can be there in the house of God, but the focus has been lost. It happened to Abraham for 99 years, he was uh, for 24 years, he was uh, working with God. 13 years out of the 24 years was uh, wasted years, it was uh, years that he couldn't account for now. Can you tell me what happened between the age 86 to 99 years of Abraham's life? No. Now that problem came when Hagar came into his life. When he began to get worried about, uh, about uh, not having a child. And then Satan took the occasion and brought Hagar into his life. And for 13 years he was out of touch. Out of out of God's such light until the Lord came back at the age of 99 and what did the Lord say to him he said I am the Almighty God God began to reintroduce himself to him God began and said walk before me and be that perfect what is that he was refocusing him and I will make my covenant between me and thee and we multiply thee exceedingly this is a serious case so Abraham our father Abraham, if he lost focus, anybody can lose focus. If Abraham at a point in his life now began to chase uh, shadow, any person can chase shadow. If Abraham at a point in his life was derailed by his wife, any person can be derailed. So you need to take note of that. So for 13 good years, I don't know whether I should call it good years or bad years, Abraham, Abraham was given... Uh, Hagar and uh, these 13 years of Hagar in his life Abraham was walking in darkness so this was 13 years of silence in Abraham's life that we have read and proven now prosperity and problems are capable of shifting people people's focus now somebody's focus can be shifted because of lack somebody's focus can be shifted because of uh, of uh, of abundance somebody's focus can be shifted because of uh, of uh, of uh, internal challenges that the person is having now peter's focus was shifted and peter shifted the focus of the rest in the, we can see that in john chapter 21 peter said I go a fishing and then all the people entrusted to him also went out fishing with him. And Jesus Christ knew that Peter has uh, lost focus. He came to Peter and then I asked him one question three times. Lord, bless down me, Peter. Let's go and see the one question that Jesus Christ asked three times. And then you ask yourself, what is Jesus asking you now? What question is he asking you now? Are you doing what Jesus Christ brought you into the ministry to do are you pursuing what you should pursue or have you started uh, spending your time wasting your time on things that is wasting the resources of God 
and wasting the time of God and uh, you are we you are you are co coming to a point where it can be said of you and said of me that you have become old and there are yet remained a time to still be a, a, a lot of land to be regained are you coming to a point where it will say that the night has come and then and you cannot walk again because of a focus that have been shifted to a, the thing that you have wasted your life and wasted the gift of God and wasted the grace of God and wasted the anointing of God Samson wasted the anointing of God on frivolities Samson wasted the anointing of God on frivolous things and so Abraham wasted the 13 years of his life in trying to manage Hagar and the problem that came in his house and God came and said, knew that all was not well and said to Abraham I am the Almighty God come back to me come back to me God is saying to you and to me come back now in John 21 verse 15 so when they have dined Jesus said unto Simon Peter Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me more than this he answered him number verse 16 again he said to him the second time Simon son John of Jonah lovest thou me then the third time he came to him verse 17 he said unto him the third time Simon son of Jonas lovest thou me and Peter knew that that was serious so what is Jesus going to tell you where you he finds you now are you in the walk are you in the core ten? are you in the tent that you are elected that you were formed in your mother's womb and I was formed in my mother's mother's womb or have we allowed distractions Have we allowed circumstances to shift our focus and we are now like dancing in the bush and we are now lived living of the real thing like the apostles did listen to me it happened to the apostle Peter and the rest of them it can happen to any person it happened to apostle Peter and the rest it can happen to any person it happened to Abraham it can happen to any person it happened to to the man of God from Judah and then it was catastrophe he couldn't reco recover himself and it can happen to any person it happened to lost to, to some rather it can equally happen to any person so you should not think that you are above this happening to you Moses refused the abundance in Egypt to intercept God's original plan for his life Moses refused the 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 abundance the riches the wealth the office the the accolades and all the the fanfares of uh, being a prince in Egypt from intercepting the program of God for his life and interrupting it in Hebrews chapter 11 of course you know that uh, it wasn't easy but he had to pay the price it was not easy but he knew that uh, the purpose of God is under serious threat I want to tell you that the purpose of God and the plan of God for your life is can be under serious threat and you may not know and you ask me what is threatening it those things you are pursuing those legitimate things you are pursuing may be the thing that is a threat to the core purpose of God for your life just like serving tables uh, turned out to become it was a good thing it was a good program but it was it, it turned out to become a stumbling block to the apostles when that was dealt with the apostles regained their, themselves and began to move forward now what influence have you come under now look at Samson Samson was operating under a terrible influence of the world that, that made his focus to be shifted Saul the same thing Abraham the same thing until God came and delivered them so Hebrews chapter 11 24 by faith Moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter it was not easy but he had to refuse it 
choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season and then and lost the purpose for which he was born. Moses was not born to become Pharaoh of Egypt. He was born to become a man that will lead Israel out of Egypt. But you see that devil quickly came to hijack, tried to hijack him. But when Moses came to age, he decided to suffer affliction with the people of God than the riches of Egypt and the treasures of Egypt. So that is it. It was by force. What are those things you need to force yourself out from? What are those things you need to stand your feet on the ground and say, no, you are taking me out from what God called me to do. You are diverting my attention. You are, dis you are disturbing my life. You are distracting my life. What are those things that have become a distraction to you as a pastor, as a pastor's wife, as a house fellowship leader, and as a student? What are those things that have distracted your attention from the school? And as a professional, what are those things that have distracted your attention from the focusing on your profession and then and coming out? So you need to discover those things and address them. Peter, uh, Peter was distracted because there was no food. So he needed to go to look for fish. Now, Moses refused abundance. Abundance of wealth. Opportunities that were, were presented by Satan to distract him. Now, Satan attempted us to, even on Jesus, he attempted to distract Jesus. He attempted to, to shift the focus of Jesus through subtlety. Now, the first one was uh, when he was to be baptized. Now, John came up with a good mind, but Jesus resisted that. He ensured that they must do it correctly. And then, shortly in chapter 4, Satan came to shift Jesus' attention to to from God and from obedience totally to God. So, Satan mostly uses things of this life and worldly the pleasures to disfocus people, to make people to lose their focus. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6 and we are going to read from verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. We brought nothing into this world. It is certain we can carry nothing out. So those things that are trying, the devil is using to remove your attention, hear it. You didn't bring them. You came empty-handed and you will go with nothing. Recently you see many, many big people in Nigeria, they are dying. But you find none of them going with all those big houses, flashy cars, and those wonderful things that are around that they have allowed to distract their attention and focus from God. Having food and remnant, let us be there with contempt. But there that we must be rich at all costs, fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful laws, foolish practices, hurtful practices, destructive practices, with drowned men in destruction and perdition. Are you not drowning? There are not some of us that, uh, that are now drowning. What they knew, they, they, they are now drowning. What they know how to do before, like uh, ministering, like teaching, because of uh, giving themselves over to business, over to pursuing money, over to things of this life, that scatter themselves here and there, and they are like drowning men, and they are looking for somebody to rescue them. Every drowning man needs person to rescue. Now you may mistaken a drowning man for somebody that is trying to demonstrate expertise. But surely, if you have a, if you are an expert in anything that has to do with the water, you will know that this one is different from expertise. That is just that she is struggling, or he is struggling, or that she is uh, drowning. For the love of money is the root of all evil which why some coveted after they have air from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But now, O man of God, 
flee this time. There are things you need to fly away from. You need to run away from. If you want to continue to remain spiritual, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. If you don't follow what you're supposed to follow and you follow other things, you will find that you have missed out. Fight the good fight of faith. There are things you need to fight. If you leave fighting them, you will discover that you will lose the real time. So then it follows that the, the man of God Isaiah and other men who lost focus and were recovered, they took some steps. Isaiah had the voice of God and responded to the voice of God. It was his response to the voice of God that restored him. Abraham also, when God, after 13 wasted years, God came to him. Abraham had the voice of God and walked and accepted the, word, the voice of God and began to allow the voice to guide him. That was how Abraham came back. That was how the... the purpose of God for Abraham's life was not lost. That was how the program of God, that was how the, the, the plan of God in Abraham's life was restored. Within those 13 years, the plan was almost lost until God recovered him, coming to him and reintroducing himself to him. So this morning, we are going to ask God Almighty to reintroduce himself are fresh to us like he did to Abraham and like he did to Isaiah God came to Abraham and said walk be up before me and be thou perfect I am Almighty God after 13 years of wandering after 13 years of being tossed here and there after 13 years of being there and was not there are you there are you are not there after 13 years of that, it looks like he was pursuing the purpose of God, but the purpose of God was not really pursued. Lift up your voice and tell God, reintroduce yourself afresh to me. Reintroduce yourself. I want a fresh introduction. I want a fresh revelation. I want a fresh encounter. Let us pray. God Almighty, we come this morning. Your word is clear. We saw that it has been predicted by Jesus that in our own day, my father, many, many things will happen that will bring about losing focus. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, the people were focusing on the unreal things. And in the days of Lot, the people focus on the temporal. The people pursued the temporal. The purpose, the people spent their time in on the temporal things. And then and we are wasted. Opportunity came, the lost opportunity. My God and my Father, I want to present every one of us who oh God this morning that have lost the focus and we are now the things that should mean little to us are now having great meaning to us. And the things that should have great meaning to us is no longer having great meaning to us. The things we should pursue are left unpursued. The things that we should spend, give the quality time are not given quality time. Father, I want to pray that you recover us. I want to pray that you restore us. I want to pray that you introduce yourself to me. And to every person, Father, all of us praying this morning, we need that you should talk, reintroduce yourself. We need that you should come afresh and show us, Father, where we have missed it. And show us where we have been overtaken. Blessed Father, look at Samson. Can you imagine a deliverer going about in the Halos house? And can you look, think about Saul, a man that received another heart? A man that a full bought oil was poured on his head, now pursuing vanity and living in disobedience. Great Father, look at the apostles. Apostles leaving the ministry of the world and leaving prayer. No time for prayer. No time for study. 
but now spending time, my Father and my God, in distribution of food. Blessed Father, our own case may not be distributing food. He may be giving attention, my Father, to the physical things about church, my Father and my God, administration and this and that, Lord in glory, and that has taken a terrible toll upon our spiritual life, now leaving us like a shell, empty, leaving us dry. My God and my Father, I pray, O oh God, that this period will be a period of a thorough restoration. Father, think about the man of God from Judah. He lost his focus and direction because of the counsel from a person that introduced himself as a prophet. Father, I pray that we should lose our focus to no, no, no person and to nothing. Look at Abraham, my father and my God. It was a girl in his house that uh, his wife introduced to him that uh, he lost 13 good years, great father, to that little girl. And for 13 good years, uh, there, there was uh, a disconnect. For 13 good years, was, uh, there was uh, a close heaven. For 13 good years, Abraham was there, but he was not there. My Father and my God, I pray you, blessed Redeemer, that uh, you will come and reintroduce yourself. If you did it to Abraham, my Father, you can do it to me. You can do it to any one of us. In the name of Jesus, my Father, look at Moses. Moses stood his ground and refused to be distracted. But we find Peter, Peter, who was supposed to be the head of the church, now he went a fishing. Blessed Father, he became distracted. And all the people under his care, their souls and lives were jeopardized. And Jesus Christ did not take it light with him. Jesus came confronting him. Jesus came saying, Peter, what are you doing? Love thou me more than this. Now, my Father, when a minister of the gospel, when a teacher, when a woman fellowship, a woman leader, when the house fellowship leader, grandfather began to love ordinary things more than his Bible, more than the place of the meeting with God. There is a very big problem. Blessed Redeemer, I ask in the name of Jesus that you come and help us. Thank you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah and Jacob had fresh touch. Isaiah, after God has uh, uh, given a revelation, Isaiah cried out and God touched him. And uh, 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 Jacob equally had a fresh first encounter with God, uh, which he didn't make good use of. That was in Genesis 28, uh, and God has to come back in Genesis chapter 32 for a second encounter. You know the story of a man that uh, Jesus touched for the first time. He was not seeing well. That occasioned the need to touch him again for the second time. So we are going to pray and ask God for a fresh touch of your heart, for a fresh touch of your tongue, for a fresh touch of your life. He did it to Isaiah. Isaiah received a touch, fire from the altar touched him and turned him. That is exactly what happened to Jacob. God touched his thigh and dislocated him and forced him down. Are you waiting for such? Let us pray that we don't come to such when God will have to slow us down so that he can force us to back to the book, back to the place of meeting with him back to a place of encounter when we will come out fresh when we come out bringing refreshing things when we will come out articulate when we come out with deep things that the spirit of god will reveal for to move this work and to move your life are you waiting for embarrassment before you begin to focus on your study as a student as a professional father we come this morning before god isaiah Lord saw you lifted up and high. And what he saw, great father, he couldn't resist. And Jacob, blessed father, wrestled with a man. And uh, what happened that night, he was unable to resist. Blessed Redeemer, I want you to bring us into a point where we cannot resist you. Father, we are asking for fresh work to be done in my life. Blessed Redeemer, 
I want you to start with me. Do a fresh walk. Do a deep walk. My God and my Father, I need a fresh encounter with the power of resurrection. I need a fresh encounter with the force from heaven. I need the hand, the same hand that touched Isaiah to touch my heart and to touch my life and turn me, great father, the same hand that touched Jacob. I want it to touch me, touch my heart, touch the heart of every person in my house, touch my wife, touch my children, touch all my children, spiritual children, biological children, touch every person under my roof, blessed redeemer. Oh God, every day, touch the children of our pastors, blessed Redeemer. We cannot do the touch, I said, but you can do the touch. So go ahead and touch them in the name of Jesus. Amen. God put his word in Jeremiah's mouth so that Jeremiah could do exploit. That we can find in Jeremiah chapter 1, 5 to 10. He said, I've touched your mouth. And then and he's, I've set you and he stated what he was said to do, to push down, to throw down, and to, to, to do all of the whole thing, to plant. And uh, to plant. Let's see it clearly. Clearly. Verse uh, 10. See, I have this there set thee over the nations and uh, over the kingdom to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build and to plant but then verse 9 then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i put my words in thy mouth so we're going to ask god to touch our mouth and put his word he touched the mouth and put his word. Let God not stop at touching our heart. Let him not stop at touching our mouth. Let him also put his spirit, put his word. Now David requested, O oh Lord, give me a new heart, a clean heart. And God granted. So let us pray. Father, this morning we have come in the name of Jesus. What you did to Jeremiah, we desire that you should do to us. What you did to uh, David, I desire that you should do to me. What you did to Isaiah, great father, I need it even much more. My God, the rebuke that uh, Peter got, father, give me rebuke, rebuke whosoever that uh, should be rebuked so that we can be refocused in the name of Jesus my father and my god we cannot do this work with the word not in our heart we cannot move forward blessed redeemer without a deep work being done in our lives being done in our heart great father in heaven a fresh work in that matter and so do a fresh work yes you brought revelation that revelation to isaiah was introduction of yourself Isaiah saw who you are father we want to see your holiness afresh we want to see your strength afresh we want to see your justice afresh we want to see you who you are how we saw you at the beginning of our encounter at the beginning of our work with you how the, the we want the things of God the word of God to mean the thing to mean much more like it meant to us when we first met you. In the name of Jesus, blessed Redeemer, one of the churches were put in trouble because they have lost their first love for God's word, for the things of God, for the house of God, and for the fellowship with God, and for the person of God. My Father and my God, we come in the name of Jesus. Father, this is not a matter of position. This is not a matter of how many years one has been. This is not a matter of name. This is not a matter of title. Father, I pray for myself. Begin with me and all the people, blessed Redeemer, that are in this platform. Oh God, and every person that is in our church, in our movement, that is in the need of this thing, Lord, I pray. Let nobody be spared. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 
the apostles of Jesus were refocused and when they became refocused they began to see results in their life and so I want us to pray that as God is refocusing us want to begin to see the result of the focus of God in you in your children in your family and in our pastors want to see the result in the families of every person yes they saw result when the when the apostles left the serving of table and began to pray and began to read the word of god again the word of god multiplied and even hardened hardened priests were began to be converted if we get refocused we will see conversion of people meanwhile instead of getting people converted we are losing converts we are losing converts meanwhile we are losing converts let the truth be said you know it are you increasing in your parish in your district you are fellowship or decreasing that is where we know you find out that after a while uh, where so, so so brother and his family there are no more what is the problem so you find out that, that people are leaving we're going to pray and pray and tell the lord refocus us and let us see the result because peter and the apostles when they became refocused the word of god multiplied and then the number of the disciples increased and even the great company of priests became obedient to the faith father we come this morning in the name of jesus we're asking the lord of glory we want to see the results as we return give us grace every one of us that we get refocused as uh, returning to the world returning to the place of prayer returning to the walk re like nehemiah returned to the walk we want to return to the field to evangelism we want to return my father to prayer meeting we want to return blessed redeemer to the bible studies great father we want to return deeply to the searching of the word of god personal studies great father in the name that is above our name we give you thanks we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor because we want to see this working in our children in our family in our wives in our husband everything about us just like it happened with the apostles they saw changes and transformation and restoration this we are desiring that it will happen in our lives in jesus name amen Abraham, Samson, Saul, the man of God from Judah, and Demas and Judas allowed Satan to interrupt God's purpose for their lives and their destiny. Let us pray against satanic interruption, satanic interception. Moses will not allow Satan to intercept his life. Let us pray for your children. That none of them will allow the devil to interrupt God's purpose for his life or her life. Or intercept him. And get him intercepted. Get him hijacked. Let us pray. Father, we saw Samson. That God's purpose was hijacked by his flesh. We saw Abraham. My God and my father. The issue of having ch child. Lord, became so important to Abraham. That Abraham kept in. The same thing happened with Saul. Saul allowed the progress and the success to affect his head and now he wouldn't listen to God again. He wouldn't listen to any person until he finished himself. The man of God from Judah yielded to lying counsel of a, a supposed old man of God. Blessed Father that has expired. Lord, I pray he didn't work wisely. He could have known. The, the Lord allowed the man, the one to slip out of the man that could have mess, made the soul to made the man of God to know that this man is not genuine. The man of God had from God, but then this prophet had from angel. Blessed Redeemer, I pray that you will help us to be people that are very, very careful. Blessed Father, in whosoever we are listening to, whosoever that is counseling us, very, very careful so as not to fall to the, the deceit of the enemy in these last days. 
Great Father, I pray for all my children. Oh God, that every one of them will guard his destiny carefully. I pray for every person under my roof. I pray for every person in the families of the people, including our pastor's children. Everyone, oh Lord, will guide his destiny and guide the purpose of God and not to allow the devil to intercept it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. After Isaiah and the apostles and Abraham were refocused, they began to experience better things in life, better things in ministry. And we are going to pray and thank the Lord because of the better things. I am trusting the Lord that as God is refocusing the watchman this period, as God is doing serious work in the lives of the watchman people, this period of pandemic, uh, listening to the Bible study over and over, listening to the Sunday light over and over, and listening to the, the charismatic hour again and again, that uh, this will make, produce better results in our lives, better things in the ministry. And every person among us will experience the workings of God. We thank you, Father, this morning. I we are trusting, dear Lord, in glory that uh, the experiences you have allowed us to pass through this period, my Father, they, they have time for ourselves and the uh, opportunity to listen to the Word of God over and over again after we have listened to it in the church or in our house. We have access, we can listen to it over and over again and to study the Bible and to find out whether what we are taught is true, I pray that it will make a great impact in our lives and leave us with great testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now the nation is in serious attack, under serious attack and the siege and blood is everywhere. We are going to pray for God's intervention. This is a serious point. There is a blood flowing everywhere. The nation is under siege. There is uh, no safety anywhere. The nation is drifting and drifting and drifting. And the men in the leadership are not listening. They think that uh, it is just critics. It is critics from opposition and this and that. And uh, many of the people are in touch with the situation. Just like a minister of the gospel, a pastor, can also be in touch with what is happening even in the church, in the parish, in the ministry, in the place where it's leading. It, it can be in touch. And then and people close are not given a, a, a correct result, a correct, a correct testimony of what is happening. And let us pray for this nation that is under attack. Today, yesterday, it is another person. Tomorrow it can be you. But God Almighty, Will uh, keep it from happening. God forbid. Eternal Father in heaven, here we are. Today, this other day, it was uh, not west and then not east. And then another time, it is not west. It is uh, not central. Now it is uh, going everywhere. The east is being ravaged. My Father and my God, when it was happening here in the north, blessed Father, every person thought it would end in the north. Right now, great Father, it has moved to the west, it has moved to the south, east, south, south, everywhere, no safety everywhere. Everybody is in confusion. My Father, this is what could have been stopped by the church if we have prayed, if the people have joined those of us in the north in Nigeria, great Father, to wage the war through prayer, this couldn't have happened. My Father and my God, but obviously, it looks like uh, the northern Christians were left on their own. My Father, I'm sorry to say this, but it looks real. Blessed Father, today it is entering every house. It is uh, even at the back doors of the people in the south, east, south, west, south, south, and north central. But Great Father in heaven, as we lift up our voice, we are sure that you are coming to help us. You are coming to deliver us. You will show us mercy. This blood shouldn't continue. Look at what is happening in southern Kaduna. Look at what is happening everywhere. Look at the killings everywhere. Father, we call upon you. Come and help and come and deliver. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, in Jeremiah chapter 30, 17, the Lord said, I will restore health unto uh, 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 Israel, and I will heal you of your 
uh, I will heal you of your sickness. We are going to pray for restoration of health. Many, many people are sick in the church and many people are dying and it looks like death has entered into the church, has entered into the house of God, has entered into the temple. So this other day, it is the house of so, 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 so person. It is this brother that is mourning. It is this sister that is mourning. It is that person mourning. And if we don't rise now and pray and stop, you see that you will see how it will continue moving. So we're going to raise our voice and tell the Lord, restore health and heal your people and bar death from our houses. Father, this morning we come. In the name that is above all name, your promise is yea and amen. You say you will restore health unto your people and you will heal your people of their sickness. Father, this morning we come. Many are sick in the diocese, in the parish dioceses, even in the church. Many people are sick within and sick without. People are sick all over the places, even beyond the shore, in the places where the people have access to good medical uh, medical uh, facilities. They are sick. Grandfather, we present them all. Oh God. Even that prayer request that is coming from one of the countries, Blessed Father, concerning an individual that has been so concerned about an individual, Blessed Father, and they have some terrible illness that came, my Father and my God, as a result of not walking wisely. First, I ask for mercy from God Almighty, and I pray, Great Father, just like I have prayed and the, uh, decree with the concerned person, Oh, God who is concerned about the person, so it is going to come to pass shortly. In the name of Jesus, Father, wherever the people are globally that are connected to us, even those who are not connected to us, my Father, and those who are not under COVID, but they have other issues. They have diabetes, they have um, other deadly diseases, they are hypertensive, they have kidney problems, they have liver problems. My Father and my God, Whatever the devil is using to attack their body, attack their health, Father, this morning we stand to decree healing for all such people. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, we ask you to intervene. Thank you. We receive your intervention this morning, and we shall testify shortly of what you have done. Receive praise and honor. In Jesus' name, we hand over today, this weekend, into your hand, asking the Lord of glory that... Uh, you use the truth you have shown to us, my Father, to set us on personal retreat for today. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let's sing from 172. I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to to me, but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer. Nyara, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost. In thine, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless.